Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you very much for joining me once again. You are always most welcome. Well today, another new kit from ICM. Well, part of it's new. <laughs> um, they have brought out their, in 2023, one of their new releases, they brought out their kit number 48313. It's the Bristol Beaufort Bomber Mark 1A with RAF pilots. So it's a bit of a combo where they've brought some, some RAF pilots into the kit. And we've got no less than one, two, three, four, five of them. If you look on the side here, we've got a really nice sort of nice one for Christmas. This isn't it really? Uh, almost like a gift set, you could call it. So you've got all your RAF pilots here. Uh, you've got a chap looks like one of the engineers, ground staff, two ground staff, and you've got three crew as well. Um, now I have never actually had the Beaufort um, when it first came out about eighteen months ago, I think it was. Um, so I've not reviewed this kit before, so it's completely new to me, so why don't we take a look, see what we've got. Now this one I think is retailing for around about, I think it's about the £49, £50 mark, thereabouts, uh, in this trim. So let's have a look, if I can get through the tape, and we'll have a little look-see. And also I'd better read you the spec because I've forgotten that, haven't I? <laughs> Too eager, you see. Too eager to get into the kit. Ooh. My tape seems to be failing here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Right. <coughs> what does it say on the side then? It says the Bristol Beaufort torpedo bomber began to arrive at the RAF Coastal Command in late 1939. Good timing. And the following spring, they began to see combat. The aircraft carried out aerial mining of sea harbours, conducting day and night torpedo attacks and bombed coastal targets. In the course of its operations, the Bristol Beaufort was modernised, its armament and the equipment was changed. The Mark 1A modification received a new machine gun turret. Oh yes, this is, ah, here we go. Mark 1A, you see. Um, and ASV radars were installed on the torpedo battleship to search for ships on the torpedo battleship. To search for ships on the torpedo battleship. Okay, um, I'm sure there's something been lost in translation there. <coughs> um, one of the areas of combat service of this aircraft was the Mediterranean Sea, where the targets were transport convoys and warships of the Axis countries. It should be noted that the service on torpedo battleships was extremely difficult and dangerous. And in some periods of the war, losses amongst the crews were the high torpedo battleships. They mean bombers, torpedo bombers. They've used the word battleships in Korean here. Uh, torpedo bombers was extremely difficult and dangerous. And in some periods of the war, losses amongst the crews were the highest of the entire Royal Air Force. Ouch. However, despite all the difficulties, torpedo bomber pilots, oh, it's got it right now, torpedo bomber pilots were able to carry out a significant number of successful attacks on enemy ships. Very good, very good. Just something in the translation that no, I still need to do a bit more checking. <laughs> Never mind. Not a problem. I'll soon forget that, I've got a nice kit in here. Right, let's have a look. Oh, yes. One Bristol Beaufort and one separate sprue with all the figures. Righty ho. Okay then, so I'll pop that over here. There we go. Let's see what we've got then. Pop that there. There we go. Oh, it shows it over North Africa. Uh, shows one with tropical filters on here. Ah! Slightly, they do this sometimes, I see, and they sometimes change the wording of the, the information, uh, data information. It adds another, oh, we had that a couple of weeks ago, where there was an extra sentence, and that's happened here. It says, this aircraft was on combat in the Mediterranean Sea in North Africa. Operation in high temperature conditions also led to the use of modified carburetor intakes on the Bristol Beaufort's engines. Didn't say that on the outside, okay. So I'm taking it we have got several options. Now then, where to begin, where to begin? I think we'll start with the decals, which look very, very nice. And it looks as though we have got an Australian option here, let me see. 
to check that. I'm right, I'm right, aren't I? I always get the Australian markings a little bit wrong in my head. Um, it's because I've never done any Australian models. Yeah, Indian Ocean, it is the Australian Royal Air Force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Australian Air Force, that's the option you've got there. And again, some very, very nice day cards. Look at these. Snake. That's interesting. Uh, Mark 1A Trop. So, slight, there's a slight deviation here. So it's now saying Mark 1A Trop. So it doesn't say that on the cover. Uh, it says here, with tropical filters, yeah? But it doesn't say that on the box. So there's nothing on the box art to tell you that it's got the tropical filters. Which is interesting. Now, is that very visible or not? <laughs> Just looking at the images. Anyway, let's concentrate on these decals. They're very, very sharp, aren't they? They do. They actually do some quite nice decals I see, and I quite like them. I've used them. They're, they're not the stickiest. They don't always. Um, you don't want to have them dwelling in the water too long, but, but they do work very well. Right. So, so this is actually a Mark One A Trop. So, here we have got our. Sprumer and quite a quite a lot of sprumer is here. Uh, you've got several sprues, they're, they're pretty big ones as well. And obviously we're using the trop filter, so there is a difference here. You can see the normal uh, intakes are deleted and you're using much fatter ones, much deeper. Uh, instead of being so slim, they're a much taller and fatter intake, and that's the difference. So let's have a look at the instructions. Forgive me, I'm just going to, um, just, just slight, they haven't quite translated everything, have they, correctly, and they haven't included the full description on the cover. It says Mark 1A with RAF pilots, it should say Mark 1A Trop with RAF pilots. And it doesn't look like it's a particularly uh, tropical scheme either, it looks like a coastal command scheme. Just like a Scotland or Cornwall scheme, if you know what I mean. Yeah, cheers. Hmm. We'll get to the bottom of it though, no problem. Right then. Let's have a go then. Now remember I've not seen both what before, so all new to me. And here we go. Um hmm. they have this thing where they say all internal details and interior elements except marked separately. A. So they mean the paint colour, don't they? A. Dark green. Dark green interior is what they mean. Yeah, I mean they could do with like um, something a bit more obvious that, that is explaining that that's a colour. A colour call out. Hmm. Anyway. Again, the only quote for them... Uh, oh no, hang on. In this case they've actually quoted Ravel and Tamiya. Ah, that's interesting. Another kit we saw recently, I forget which one it was now, um, only called out for ICM and nothing else. But here we've got Tamiar and Ravel. That's good. Excellent. Because it's important that they recognise that people may have stock of other things already. Although their paints are very good. Make no mistake. Right. There's the acrylics, of course. So here we go. And it actually starts with building up the interior, obviously, of the the sort of cockpit and cabin floor and the bulkhead and then you're going to build the uh, uh, the sides of the fuselage with the windows going in there and there's like a spar cover and then you're going to put this uh, cockpit interior um, crew area that's going to be inserted into the actual fuselage and then we've got uh, this big main spar that's going to be built up and has the the cockpit basically attached to it and that's going to go into that same fuselage side like so. Then we're going to be producing this uh, area of the uh, the pilot's area where we're going to have all the main instrumentation um, and you can see there we've got the pedals for the rudders, you've got all the main uh, cockpit instrumentation is done via decals See decals for that. 
Oh yeah, they're very small though. They're tiny, tiny, tiny ones. I didn't even spot them as being instruments. Hmm, they're not the most... Hmm, they're not the most impressive instruments. Let's just go back to that so you know what I'm talking about. I don't think I'm rambling on. See what I mean? These are the instruments here. They're not... They're not... The finest looking instruments I've ever seen as a decal, to be honest. Look a bit vague, really, don't they? A bit of a blob, but anyway. Okay, back to the instructions. So, uh, then you're going to put this area in complete with the seat, uh, which is going to be the seat for the co-pilot, I think it is, navigator, going in there. And then we're going to be building up the pilot seat here, which is going to go straight in. And... Is that the toilet? <laughs> is it quite a toilet though? <laughs> oh boy, okay. And then we're going to build all this side up effectively, including this, uh, this is the area for the, the bay, for the, uh, the rear uh, wheel. One or two holes are going to need to be drilled here. And then you're going to build up the, uh, the port side of the fuselage. And then you're going to bring that together into to mate up with the, uh, the starboard side and a few, a few other items. I think D55 is the radio, I think. Uh, and then you're going to have some of these uh, interesting windows and things going in here, like a portal window. Well, you can have it closed up or you can have it open. Um, that's going to require some masking. It's another one of these kits from ICM that needs a lot of masking, I think, again, because it's a very uh, open cockpit, glass house type cockpit. Got here what looks like a Lewis gun. Is that a Lewis or a Vickers? I always mix them up. It's a Vickers, isn't it? Yeah, it's a Vickers gun, not a Lewis gun. Uh, and then we've got, yes, lots of glasswork area, which isn't, you're going to need a mask for. You're going to need a masking set for this one. And you put in those like portal windows at the side. You've got your lights going in, navigation lights going in at the leading edge of the wings, top and bottom wing coming together. Then you've got the little wingtip light. And you've also got your ailerons and your flaps coming in, which is which quite nice. And then over here we've got another couple of holes to drill. I what the holes are for. It doesn't actually say. This is one of the things that I seem to tend not to do. They don't tell you what you're doing it for. But anyway, they want you to drill a hole, so um, it must be for it must be for weapons or something, surely. It's going to go in that wing. Let me just skip forward a second. Skipping forward here to try and understand what it is. Torpedoes? No. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's for a UHF aerial type arrangement. That's what it's for. Some sort of this is this advanced marine radar system. So anyway, then you're going to um, do the starboard side wing with all those same. Uh, appendages, your flaps and your ailerons and then we're going to build up our horizontal stabilizers and we're going to insert them into the rear and also bring the two wings in onto the spars. It looks like a quite a solid construction. Well, then we've got our rudder. I'm going to put the, uh, the balancer weights on there, organize your tail light painting. Uh, though I'm not sure you've painted at this stage but anyway and insert the elevators and then we've got the, the nacelles for the engines going in they're going to be inserted in the, from underneath on the wing and then we've got our wheels and tyres coming in here with the undercarriage legs uh, quite reminiscent of the mosquito design isn't it really uh, very similar uh, that's coming in obviously you can have it uh, open all because so you know it retracted, but it doesn't actually show retracted, does it? Um, but there's some there's some clear information about how it goes in there. So that's going in there. Then you've got your doors coming in for the gear here, both sides. Then you're going to build up your engines with those uh, the radial engines going in the Beaufort, and then you've got all your. exhaust ports there for the uh, engine cylinders. We've got our uh, front of the engines going on here and the cowls going in. 
Then you get to these tropical filters at the bottom right here. So these are these much chunkier tropical filters than it has on the standard one. And then you've got your cows coming in with your exhaust on. Um, onto where your propellers are. So did I miss the propellers? Yeah, so I, I sort of went and skipped ahead too much. Yeah, your propellers and spinners are going in there, aren't they? Sorry about that. So then you're bringing in the cowl, the two sides of the cowl. Is it two or three? Two, yeah. And you're adding your exhaust pipes. And then you've got your gun turret on the top turret. With uh, what looks like twin, twin Brownings, I think those are. Looks like twin 303 machine guns from Browning, I think. And that goes in the ring there. Uh, the turret ring. And then you've got your glass work. Again, you're going to need to mask it. The glass work for the turret coming in here. Goldfish bowl. And then you've got your guns. So you've got guns at the front as well. This is another another twin Browning 303, I think. So it's quite well armed, isn't it? Then we're bringing in our um, torpedo uh, mechanism. Release mechanism underneath. Get to the business end of things now. And then you've got your bomb bay, because there's an option here, bomb bay doors. Uh, or you have the torpedo instead. You've got either or option here. A or B variant. So uh, A variant is when you're having a torpedo and the, the doors are open. And B is when you're going to have it closed, like normal Bombay doors. And then A, as I said, was open. So there's the torpedo coming in here. And if it's B, it's shut up. That's what it'll look like there. Then we have got our... Oh, right, okay. Lower... I didn't know this. Because uh, I'm, not, I'm not an expert on Beaufort. So it's got a lower turret as well, gun turret here. Rearward firing gun turret. Goes in underneath. And again, it's an option. You've got a gun turret or you've got just a, a glass window. So you can have it really armed to the teeth, can't you? You've also got some radio aerials going on the side. And then you've got these, uh, this is these UHF aerials I mentioned, which you may need to drill the holes for. If you want that variant, which isn't made terribly clear earlier on, it makes it look like you've got to drill the holes, I thought. Well, be careful. Then we've got a radar um, transmitter. Aerial hoop here, complete with an aerodynamic cover. That's going in there. Plus another radio aerial, conventional radio aerial there. And that's almost it really. Then if you want the torpedo trailer, which comes with it. Ah, that's nice. So it has its own torpedo trailer for the torpedo. So here's your torpedo, it goes together here. And you've got quite a fancy little arrangement here to put it on this trailer, complete with wheels. And it can be wheeled around the airfield. Isn't that nice? And uh, here we go again. 64 windows. Oh, this is another one of ICM's glass house nightmares. <laughs> they do seem to like their aircraft that have a lot of window framing, don't they? So I, I guess you'd have to go to maybe Edward or somebody. Have a look around and get yourself a, a mask set. I do wish they would include one, I really do. I mean, you, people have said to me that they're not always the most sharply accurate dimensions on some of these templates so you can't necessarily trust them and that's when yeah it would be better if they had a master and they just produced a, an actual mass set I think it would be that's the way of the future I see I'm telling you and then we've got the markings so we've got this one that I said looks like a, a regular coastal command version and then you've got another one which again looks like it's got the sort of UK based style then we've got the Australian one in fact just to be clear about this that's a Mediterranean one I was right about Malta, wasn't I? So it's Malta, or just Mediterranean, this one. Or this one is the one that's um, Indian Ocean, presumably Indian Ocean region, Spring 44 Australian version. And then finally we've got one that's e Egyptian based, actually. Based in Egypt. That's got, of course that's got the tropical filters on it. Wow, well there's quite a lot to get through there, wasn't there? That was, um, that was quite intense. Quite a lot of instructions to be fair. So we shall put that away and I think we'll start by having a look at the instructions and the parts for the crew. The figures. So it, they're recommending paint set 3033 which is, if you bear with me a second, 
3033 is the World War II RAF pilot set. Fair enough. Right, let's have a look at these figures first then. They're the sort of first point of interest that's something that's new. Uh, I believe they're new to the 23, so yes, let's take a look. Those are very nice as well. Right, let's zoom you into these. Get a really close up look at them. There we go. Now then. Now these are 48 scale, remember? Can the camera recognise a face? We get lock. If you can get lock at 48 scale, then ICM have really got it sorted. Uh-huh, yep, it's focused in on that nicely, hasn't it? You've got some really nice hands there. Um, and good detail on the boots. And the trousers. And the tunic. There. On the back. And then we've got one of the pilots here in his flying gear. And again, trousers and the boots. And this is a guy that's carrying his radio, the radio gear in his hand. Sorry, got the wrong way here. Right, there we go. We have a focus problem. There we go. So, have them at the right end. There we go. Radio gear in his hand. Yep, and the camera is zooming in, locking onto the face. It recognises it's a face, eyes and nose, etc. And in the middle, I've got another one of these chaps. Carrying his parachute, another face, and the back. There's the torso. Oops, that way. That's nicely detailed, isn't it? With all the straps for the parachute. And you got the legs. The boots. Then you've got this one. Oops. Yeah, at this end. So this is one that's sort of squatting down. So we've got I'd better I show you this one actually. See the leg the bent leg and the bent back shoe. So it looks quite effective, doesn't it? <laughs> and then over here we've got the officer. Again, another nice, nice jacket, like the flying jacket, the boots, Oops. boots. Place uh, mission orders in his hand, and he's got his uh, RAF cap there. There we go. Oh, it's good, isn't it? They do nice figures at 148 ICM, they really do. Just have a look at the back of this chap I was showing you. Well, I didn't show you the backs of them, but just have a look at the back here of his flying jacket with all the straps and uh, the uh, parachute straps, etc. Look at that. And the back of his fleecy flying jacket is visible as well. And on this one you've got the chap has got his um, he's got his hand in his pocket. That's well done, isn't it? They've done it nicely, haven't they? Yes, it's um 
Very nice figure set that, it goes very nicely with that, that aircraft I'm sure. So that's that. And then we've got the Beaufort, which is say I'm, I've never seen before, so it's all new to me, for being honest. We have of course, before I go off the figures, that we've got this um, instructions. I'm never very keen on the way they do it actually, I'd rather them show the individual parts assembling together. And here they're just almost showing the finished figure and giving you a colour call out guide. But I think for intermediate modelers plus, then it's fine. You know. And then here we've got the, the map of the actual sprue itself, it. which is very nice. So that goes in there, and then we have got a very enormous bag, huge bag of parts here for the Bristol Beaufort torpedo bomber. This is very impressive. So we feel that back. So that when I want to fill it up again, that'll be easy. There we go. Now then. Okay. So, oh, there's a lot of parts. We've got some parts off the sprue here. Well, you know, ICM do this thing where they keep on putting the uh, they keep on putting the parts in one big bag, which I wish they wouldn't do. I think we need to sort of have a think about what Tamiar do. So we've got two radial engines that are off the sprue here. Uh, we know where they came from, they came from over here. So we'll, we'll look at them first, I think. As they're in a state of disarray. <laughs> Try and, oh, there's another one here. Oh, gosh, quite a few parts off the sprue. It's because they've got all these sprues crushed together in one bag. Better not to do that. Better not to do that. Right, we'll look at them first. So we've got two of these, and it's our little radi uh, radial even, radial engine. Um, good detail, you can see the nice detail of the, uh, the cylinder heads there. So there's two of those, both off the sprue. And I've also got this uh, little window that's also come adrift. And then we have off the said sprue, I'll see you back for this, the rest of it. But look at the look at the fine detail work they've achieved here with the moulding. Some really nice moulding, especially on those tyres, for example. Look at the tyres. Isn't that nice? Yep. And then over here you got the wheel. The props. Um, and you've got that antenna that goes on the top, surrounded by the um, aero cover. Nice meaty looking main gear legs. And here you've got part of your uh, exhausts coming out of the cylinders. Um, and then over here you've got some wonderful machine guns, look at those. Aren't they nice? Those are really cool, aren't they? Here you've got your uh, yoke. Some really, really nice, fine, fine, very thinly moulded parts there. Very delicately moulded, you could say. Then we have, at the other end of the scale, we've got something huge. <laughs> the wings, top and bottom. Uh, and they're very nice actually, those are very nice. Very fine panel line detail, not overdone I would say. Quite, quite nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite an achievement actually, that's quite a nice uh, sprue. Then we have got our fuselage, I mean fuselage sections here. Uh, 
I mean, it's not that huge a bomber, is it? It's it's not much bigger than a Mosquito, maybe only... It's, same, oh, it's pretty much the same size as a bow fighter, isn't it? Because they're from the same stable, but... It's like a bow fighter on steroids, really. But they've got nice, very... Very good uh, panel lining. It does fade out a bit, though. Can you see that, actually? Not fade out completely, but it, it changes its depth. Can you see this? You watch, watch this panel line here. Get a bit closer. It, it, its depth kind of fades a bit, which is a little bit unusual. I see them, and it is supposed to be a panel line. If you can just trace it there, you see how it fades away. Yeah, that's a little bit disappointing actually, because that's something they're normally really good on. So I'm not sure about that. This is definitely this is a slightly older tool. It is 18 months old, even though I haven't seen it before. Let's see if it's the same on the opposite side. Well, it's not as bad on that side. Just see what I mean. The, other, the opposite side is a little bit more consistent. The same panel line. So we're looking at we're looking at this one here. It's dropping down. Get a bit closer again. Let's see if you can try and get you this. It doesn't fade away as much on this side. Can you see it? It's a bit more consistent there. Yeah. Go back to this one. This one, it's sort of, it's still there, but it's fainter, it's shallower, much fainter, hard to pick up. Interesting. I think it might have to lose a quarter of a point for that because that's. Um, does it do it anywhere else? No, don't think so. Seems to be one that's a bit weak. Right. Okay. So that's those and those done. Let's uh, have a look at these. Is that a re that's a re repeat sprue, isn't it? Arnold? Yes, we have a repeat sprue there. Then we have the torpedo sprue. Now look now, this is look. This looks really good. Check this out. So this is all your torpedo and its trolley components. There we are. So you've got the torpedo. The arming spinner at the front. That's a nice looking torpedo, I've got to say, if you know what I mean. You've got little wheels and you've got your tail uh, fusing spinner. Interesting. Then, we've got this one which has got a lot of the detail part and another Another one of those uh, radial engines has gone missing. See, they've just all gone a didn't they? Uh, <laughs> got stuck in another sprue. So here we've got the. Um, oh, you've got some very nice figuring here in terms of the uh, stretch skin effect on the elevators, and some very very fine small parts, and you've got your cradle there for your torpedo. And you've got your tail wheel here. And of course you've got your cowlings, cowling flaps for the engines there. And then you've got the uh, exhaust area for the engine uh, cowls there. Over here we've got our Bombay doors. Yeah, very nice. And quite a lot of detailed parts for the cockpit including levers as you can see. Hmm. Over here we've got these rather interesting VHF aerials that I mentioned earlier which you do have to drill a couple of holes for. And then we've got our machine guns here. This is the Browning 303s you can see here. And then we've got our tropical filters here. Big ones. More of these VHF aerials. Or is it UHF? I'm not sure. <laughs> and then we've got the, uh, the Gunners turret uh, mounting point. Mount. It's there. Then <clears throat> we've got a very, very big sprue indeed, which has got all these 
big pieces like the control surfaces, we've got the bulkheads, look, internal bulkheads, walkway, doorways, got the flaps, you've got the internal spars, and then we've got the horizontal stabilizers. Over here we've got the rudder. Let me show you that way. Rudder, there we go. And then we've got the nacelles. And then we've got the inboard section of the rear, uh, trailing edge of the wing. Yeah, big old sprue, isn't it? Big old sprue, that one. And you've got, you've got some fair detail internally actually, it's not bad at all, look at this. Internal detail, you've got the flap internal detail there, look. And then you've got the cockpit floor, etc, internal detail. It's not too bad. Wow. That is a big sprue, it's the biggest one of the kit. So, we're going to see if we can get all the rest in. Top of that. Without doing any more damage. So there's been quite enough of that already. <laughs> Just in transit. Well, I was saying that ICM normally, you know, you never get that. Um, I recently mentioned about ICM seldom ever comes damaged like that. With things off the sprue. It's the first time I've ever seen it, actually. Um, so, yeah, they need to be a bit careful, don't they? We don't get too much of that in the future, really. But I think it's just this one bag policy that's the problem. You know, it's the same with Airfix, they do it as well, and this is what happens, I'm afraid. It's just not really the best way to protect the product. I've been completely honest about it. Anyway, we will now finally have a look at the clear parts. <coughs> Fingers crossed. Although recently I've had a, a better run in the last couple of weeks you know, after some very, very troublesome clear parts from all over the place, really. Um, right, okay, well, yeah, it's a bit strange on the sprue. I uh, can't see any faults or flaws, really. That's good news. Have a look at this. There's a little tiny bit of flash here and there. If you can see that, yeah, it's the, it's the touch of it on the bottom of that one. There we go, that's better. You see it a bit better now. But again, you need a, a really good mask set for this, don't you? That windscreen reminds me of a Mitchell somehow, front windscreen. But it's a big glass house, you've got a lot of guns. Uh, and you've got these turrets, you're going to need a lot of masking to get this right. So it would have been nice to have a masking set, wouldn't it? Got various windows and uh, uh, windows and uh, observation windows, etc. There. But ultimately, very nice clear parts indeed, in fairness. Very nice. Yes, excellent. You've got the little wing tips as well there. So in the end they were fine. So, what do we think then? Bear in mind I've never seen this bow kit before personally. Uh, it's the first time I've ever opened one, seen the sprues or anything. It's just not what I actually did the first time round. So, what's the verdict going to be here? So, Bristol Beaufort Mark 1A with tropical filters and RAF pilots. Well, there was some um, negatives. Well, there was, uh, yeah, quite a few parts off the sprue, which is very unusual. We've got a few bits of bad translation and not, not, not a lot of clarity about which version it actually is. It's the one with tropical filters, which isn't made clear until you get into it inside. Now, one or two little slip ups and minor mistakes only, but. Yeah, it's a nice kit, nice torpedo, 
parts are very well formed. Uh, some really nice sculpturing of those parts, a bit like the FX Hansen, with the you know the stretch skin effect or stressed skin. You've got the pilots, and they're very very nice. In fairness, um, yeah, a little bit of um, yeah, it's a nice kit. I think I'm going to give it 9 out of 10 this time. Just one or two little glitches there that are just a little bit confusing in some areas. Uh, a little bit of uh, yeah, parts coming off the sprues and things. Not quite as good as the normal, very high standard that we get from ICM. Um, so I think that they've tried to put too much into a slightly tight box. Probably wouldn't have the problem if it didn't have the pilots in. It's just another little packet that has just squashed it all a bit more. I think that's all it is. So 9 out of 10 is a good score there, and the, the figures are nice. It wouldn't put me off the kit at all, I think it's got a lot going for it there. Uh, and a very interesting subject, which not many other people do really, or if anybody does. So, 9 out of 10 is where I'm at. I hope you'll give me 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up. And don't forget to ding the subscribe button if you haven't already, and if you have, then make sure you've dinged the all option on the notification bell because you want to be informed of any of my new videos when they come up uh, and inform you straight away rather than have YouTube decide for you whether it thinks the subject is of interest to you or not because it does that a lot. It does it for me with other people's material and I don't know, I've, I've now got rid of that, I now make sure it's uh, notify, notify all videos from such and such, you know, because it's the only way and then I can just think, oh I'm not interested in that, well fair enough, but uh, you don't want somebody else making those decisions for you, so make sure you do that. And thank you very much. Don't forget to share the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, any friends or other people you know that are uh, interested in the subject. We'll have plenty more coming up over Christmas and New Year. We're going to be having, uh, let's talk about, a number of different manufacturers. And we've got some, uh, some Christmas related fun. I think we might have a... Top 10 kits of the year, maybe again, which will probably not be the list you're expecting. It never is with me. <laughs> or is it? Or is it? Or am I predictable? Who knows? We shall see. But I, I, I can't even say to you in my mind, I've made my mind up yet, because there's still at least three more kits that I'm urgently waiting for uh, and are imminent. So uh, we will have the final scores on the doors when we've got the final kits in front of us, you know. And then I'll have a pretty good idea of a list by then. Anyway, hope you join me for that and any other videos in the meantime. Thank you very much for joining me and all your time watching if you got this far. And in the meantime, till next time, take care of yourselves. Thanks a lot and bye for now.